Uh, I made one video, and now this is my second video, and I feel a lot better after watching the first video. Um, I think my computer just froze. I hope it didn't freeze. Hello, hello, is it working? All right, it is. It is working. Right. Um, I feel better. I just like made a video with a lot of negative energy, and then I realized while I was making the video that I was just telling myself earlier, don't put negative energy out in the world, man. Don't do it, because it causes runaway breakdown, which is a phenomenon uh, that describes how lightning is produced. One electron goes, and then another one, and all the other ones follow it. Like, <sighs> huge. That's how, elect that's how electricity goes. Runaway breakdown. And uh, same with behavior. One little bit of negative energy can just cause shit storms of negative energy. So, as, as much as I want to complain, I'm not going to. Right now, I'm not. I'm just not going to complain. There's no point in complaining. I've got a pretty good. I got a lot of things to attend to that I have not been attending to. I don't think it's appropriate to air them out on YouTube, necessarily. Uh, negative energy, huh? Discipline. Don't make videos when I'm not feeling good. Because then everyone will think that that's who I am. And when I feel great, make a video. And then everyone will think that's who I am. But I always feel like that. What's the point of life? Is it to figure out how it works and then get out? Or is it... To really to make it better for everyone or is because you can't do that so you know you can make it better for some people um, I mean it was kind of cool being born into street lights and streets and cars and traffic and money and TV and video games it was cool just to to have that be my base of reality. I never really questioned that life was anything other than street lights and video games and houses and cars and grass and dogs and shit and all that stuff. Until years later, in my 20s, I started to realize, like, some people are born in fucking desert towns with mud huts and shit, and they don't, you know, they have a no written language or something. So it might, or, or, 2,000 years ago, you know, people were born with stone tools and shit. So, is the point of life, is my point of life, or, or anybody's point of life, to make it better for the next generation? Who is the next generation? I'm making it better for other people's kids. Just by entertaining them. By, by doing like science work. I don't like fake. Which is what took me away from acting. Because since seventh grade, when I realized I wasn't going to be a brain surgeon, or at least I haven't decided that I'm going to be a brain surgeon yet, in like eighth grade, I thought I still thought I wanted to be a brain surgeon. And then in high school, I kind of just knew, like in tenth grade, that acting was the easiest, most lucrative job um, for me. So I pursued it pretty hard, and it was very rewarding. And still to this day, it can be very rewarding when, when pursued, when approached. Uh, but when I got into this reality thing with YouTube 
and getting all these double mediums and shit and like you know you perform a real person and then all of a sudden you're a real person and then you are a performer and you can't be a real person anymore because you're supposed to have this performance air about you I started to question the validity of the entertainment industry and what it does and what it's trying to do and you know there's nothing wrong with making a movie but Heath Ledger killed himself because probably because of drugs and alcohol maybe number one but really that guy took on roles that made him crazy and everyone saw him as this crazy person and it just made him crazier and that's the heaviness of this entertainment industry. that's why entertainers get paid so much because it's a fucking workload on your psyche uh, your psychology it just fucking devastates your psyche it will transform you your character you know, obviously you transform yourself, but it's like you give over to the current and go flying down the river. That's basically what happens when you take on a character, from my experience. And it's very easy to overcome, but the more you do it, the longer you do it, and especially if you're not stable, like I started smoking pot and my mind started getting open to suggestion. I started to feel like I was this stuff that I was portraying. When I'm sober, it's, it's easy to joke with people and to be sarcastic and to say things that aren't true people don't know if I'm being honest or not, they'll be like, are you joking? And that's, I kind of like that. But I don't want to explain myself, and if they don't get it, then what's the, you know. It's like I don't even joke with people anymore because they don't realize I'm joking. They look at me like I'm being mean, and they're like, and I'm like, fuck you. You know, that kind of thing. That's my sober persona. I mean, I can take on that character with that. That's no problem. Uh, but knowing... I'm just so concerned with what I'm portraying now. I see these little impacts, you know, these little things that get said that affect thousands of people for days and weeks and months and years. These little, one little thing that gets said it affects so many people. Oh, excuse me, that was delightful. Um, But I've, like, poured myself into the entertainment industry for 15 years. The last 15 years. Since I'm 15 years old. I'm 31 right now. Uh, 14 or something, I started doing plays, you know, going to the local community theater and doing plays when I was, like, 14 or 15. And just nonstop ever since, I went to college for theater. I went to New York to do theater, Chicago to do theater, L.A. to do film. Funny thing is, I don't really do theater anymore, and film's obsolete. Yeah, I do the occasional bit of theater. Theater's okay. I don't mind it. It's time-consuming. It's kind of rewarding. It's really self-ingratiating. Like, you want to fucking pat yourself on the back and do a theater job get into a play, and everyone will tell you how great you are all the time. And you'll start to believe it. And then you'll do great things. Not bad. But who is all about ego, man. It's all about fucking ego. Theater and acting. It's all about who's the best. Who's the funniest. I want to be the funniest. I'm the... And it's like all these people trying to be funnier than the next. Topping each other. Left and right. Go, go, go. You know, I, I, I don't know how... Uh, I was like, I was obsessed with being popular, which is why I fit into it so well, into the theater crowd. And I didn't really got what people were like, ooh, it's a theater crowd. I didn't, so now, now I can, now I get it more. Uh, it's annoying to me now. These people that are just nonstop, like they don't want to, they don't want to relax. Or maybe they do want to relax, but they just would rather be popular, you know. And like, I got a taste of popularity with YouTube, and I don't need it. It's helpful, it's useful to make money, and to sell your multi-billion dollar organization, but... I'm not chasing it like I used to. I used to feel like, unless I was famous, or unless I was the most popular or well-liked of the group, that I was failing. And now I'm like, I, I don't need to... Obviously, if I don't try to be the most liked of a group, I'm not the most liked, and people will leave. That's been my experience, is if I don't try to be liked and accepted, people will leave because they get uncomfortable and they don't want to be around it. Like, they want me to be trying to be funny and, and likable and all that stuff. And that's not even theater, that's just like real life.
So I'm like stranded out in the middle of this ocean of ideas right now with my fucking boat of acting off in the distance. I let it pass by. Um, obviously, I could get on like a jet ski and ride over to the boat and hop back in if I need to, but... Life so difficult for myself. It's, it's just, it's laid out to be so fucking easy. I've got friends at the station. I've got friends. My buddy was just one survivor. Uh, like, well established, very wealthy people as relatively close friends of mine. People that are doing really well and will continue to do really well. Dave, Days, man. Joe Pena. Uh, Do you know if it's Pena? I think it's Pena. Uh, Mystery Guitar Menu. These are people that I've known for like years, shared shared YouTube success with, and and other people too that I know that are just like people are like, hey, when you have something to invest in, let me know and I'll invest in it. I'm like, oh, that's great, thank you. And then it's like I can't pull the trigger. I get an idea like we're gonna open a restaurant. And then I start to think, like, I could be the head chef at this restaurant. I could create the, the ingredients. You. Cooking is something I've, I've learned to do in the last couple of years. Exce exceedingly good at. You know, I, I can taste and smell the food while I'm mixing it. Like, I can smell what needs to go in. Smell before it burns and, like, heat temperature. I love, like, lifting the thing off the thing and spinning. You know, it's just... So I considered, like, being a chef and, like, writing up some some really healthy recipes like with different oils you know you can you can choose your oil do you want a coconut oil or a, sa a sunflower seed oil uh, olive oil do you want butter and you could pick sort of be like you know you get pasta but then you can choose what kind of oil you want with it it's very you know most restaurants I've never really been to a restaurant that that's been the case but that's a huge part of flavoring and health is what kind of oil you have in your food you know, ideas like that. I got millions of ideas like that. And then I start to think, like, what? So then I would be the head chef, and I'd be locked into, like, going to this job eight to ten hours a day as the head chef. And I'm like, I don't want to be a head chef for the rest of my life. I don't want to do it. And I just gave up on it. Just walked away from it. So now, no restaurant. No, not going to be me, you know? And I feel like I do that with a lot of stuff. Like, I get the idea of, like, dude, I don't want to be on set from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., five days a week, though I would get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to do it. I don't want to get locked into a fucking six-year contract or a two-year, three-year contract on a soap. I mean, it's getting to the point where I'm like, money, 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 but I don't want to go, I don't know. No, like, I can play the music, but playing music with people is really weird. I don't know if you've ever done it, if you've ever been in a band, maybe you're in a band right now, and that's fucking cool. I know a few people that may be watching this that are in a band. You know, The Lost Patrol, that's Tommy's brother. Uh, other bands, you know, uh, whatever. Being in a band is difficult because there's this, like, leader. There's got to be a leader in the band, right? Was John Lennon the leader of the Beatles? I don't know. Paul McCartney was he the leader? The great thing about the Beatles is they didn't really, they didn't really have one leader; they had two. Um, so that's what I've been going for. It's like I, I need a band with two leaders. No one I've played with has stepped up to be like a leader, a functioning conversational leader for a band. They're all like they want to do their thing, but don't know how to interact with me, or don't know how to interact like with a bandmate or. Or they just go along with what I'm doing and give no re reprise or recourse. Does, and so it's like, it's just like mindlessly playing what I'm playing. And that's, I can tell they don't like it. But I feel like they don't like it. And I'm like, you know, I need a leader. I can't, I need someone that has all their own material that is awesome with harmonies, that it wants to blend stuff that's already written and write new stuff. And it's just not common. People that are cool, you know? Like, the only person I could think that I would ever want to do that with is Dave Days. 
I mean, David's fucking awesome, but he's not like a vocalist. So it's, I mean, he is a vocalist, but he, he's never, rarely is he like, hey, check out this new song I wrote, and then he sings it for me. Like, I, he has yet to do that. So it's difficult to sing along to his stuff. I, I feel like I have to write it, and I have to be the leader. And it's like, I need another leader. I need a leader that's like, I, hey, this material. I'm like, sweet, this material. And we're like, these material, you know, it's like. <laughs> and I feel like it could be my dad. It's silly, isn't that silly? It's really stressful to try and try and keep a band together, man. Then everybody wants to do drugs in the band, and then it's just out of fucking control. When someone's on a drug, and the other person's not on that drug, it becomes potentially very difficult to get stuff done. I don't know if I really agree with everything I've said in this video, just so you know. It's, I've said some, some outright, outlandish things, some very brazen things, and I don't know if I necessarily mean everything I said, and if I offended you, I'm sorry. Um, acting, directing, music, big money, you know. I love it. I... I guess that's what's important. I love it. I'm thinking again about this old manager I had that they want to like groom you and get you ready and like put you there and then take you away, put you there and take you away, and if you try and do anything on your own, they're like, no, 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 stop, don't do that, don't do that, let us do that. You're like, okay, don't forget I'm a real person, and this is why you cast me, is because I'm, because of who I am, not just because of the way I look. They're like, well, okay, but stop saying that. And if you say it again, they're like, you're fired. Like, they'll be the fifth. It's like the entertainment industry, pretty much. You fucking do what they say. It's a lot of money involved, but it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's not a nice industry. It's not, making movies with your friends is fun. Making money off that is yet to be determined. You can make, like, ad revenue off YouTube once you start making, you get, like, a dollar for 2,000 views or something. Something like that. I don't know exactly how much. You know. The key is do what you love, which to me, for me, is playing music. Or just have, making stuff up on the roll, making fun, you know? I don't know. Fuck. I feel a lot better after the making this video, though, that's for sure. And after making the video before this and watching it and watching all that negative energy seep out of me, then making this video with a bit more of a positive spin, which I still have, by the way. Quizzing. Quizzing. I'm going to keep on talking. Because you know why? I watched that last video, and I didn't want it to end. So, that leads me to believe I don't want this video to end. So keep talking again, because you're interesting. You're very interesting. I like you. You can do it. You are great. You can change one fiber of your being and affect everything. So do it in the right way. Precaution? I, 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 what I think what happens is our, our neural fibers are like flowing like this, kind of like algae in the water, how they're flowy in your brain. And then they stick into a position when you have a thought and they like, or, or they're like, be, they'll like move and that's like with the thought transpiring and it's electromagnetic like the electromagnetics will, will like hold them in place and when you look at someone else and you relate to someone else it's when your fibers will be like Wah, and they'll like match a thing that they have or complement a thing they have but the key to survival is to let your brain fibers continue to flow like when you walk around and you meet people stay flowy 
don't get locked into a way of thought, you know, magnetically locked in, and you'll survive because you'll be able to, uh, you know, rename any situation basically, move with it, and if a baseball comes flying at you, you'll be able to catch it or you'll at least see it coming. You'll be able to make a decision. But if you're like, life is one way, it's like beep beep from off in the distance behind you. You know, shit comes at 360 all the time. So you got to maintain this flowy thing, and that's what gold is, helps you do. Gold, it like coats your neurons, uh, monetized gold, if you can get colloidal gold, and it's like super, so your neurons become more like superconductors, and it's very malleable. And drink a lot of water, so you have brain fluid, so they can float. And uh, iridium is good to clear the plaque off of your neurons, your brain fiber. But mostly it's just, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of breathing, a way of behaving, a way of being open to change. I'm sorry I'm so weird. If I meet you at a party and I'm weird, it's not intentional. I just take care of my body. Like, I'll be in the middle of a conversation sometimes and I'll just, like, remember that I have some tension in my shoulder. And I'll just focus on the tension rather than what people just said. That's a fucked up thing I've been doing lately. Actually, I gotta get back into the swing of paying attention to people. Put other people before I, before me, right? No, put myself first. The other people can watch me and laugh if they want. But you have to help yourself before you help anyone else. And I really can't go on. You have to wear these glasses. That's cool. They're not even glass. You have to wear these plastics. Plasticses? You also have to floss and clip your nails. You really should leave notes for yourself on Sticky Tack. This isn't really Sticky Tack. Hold on. I'm putting headphones in. Say that again? Wait, hang on. Huh? You know, one thing leads to another. I'll be seeing you.